this is my first report. So why don't we, like I had said before, let's keep it simple. So I'm going to actually save this template off. So I'll go save as. And so what I'm going to do here is under my libraries. Larry, while, Larry, we've got a few questions. Let me know when is a good time uh, for us to address those. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, just give me just a few seconds. I want to get this cool. to the point where we can run it, and then I think that will okay. be a good break for questions. Perfect. Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this as a type of rich text format, and then we'll just call this uh, template one, just to give it some sort of name. Save it there. So now that I've saved this, I can actually upload that template to actually be used in PeopleSoft. So, uh, so what I'm going to do before I do that um, is uh, let me actually close out of words. And what I can do here is uh, I can actually go in and do, and I'll do that later, do the commit on that. Uh, there we go. My password manager was misbehaving. So, so now that we've got that saved off, whatever changes I make, I don't have to worry about breaking that. So I've checked it in. Um, now I can go back and upload it and then run it on the process scheduler. So I'll go back to my report definition, and I'll just put in the rest of the information I need. So uh, sample XMLP report status is not in progress. It's active. Uh, report category, this is actually security. This actually drives security uh, for who can make changes to this, uh, this definition. Default retention days, I'll just set that to 99. Uh, and so over here is where I can actually set the effective date and upload this. So again, so I'll upload this one. And we'll go back to my Grace Sparling, XMLP, my template. Upload that. So active again, not in progress. So again, for this report, I could have multiple template files. You'll notice that. And that's where I can actually have each template file actually, um, uh, you know, the, the, the template actually change based on the data that's in the report. So I've got all of that in there. Uh, and I'm just going to save this off. So now that I've got this up here, I can actually run it. So now that, so what I can do here, let's go Query Report Scheduler, and add new value. And the data source type is a query. Report name is this one. The template as of date, so you can change all of that. But change your as of date, uh, as of date sort of thing. And so now I can run this thing. So if I click Run, and the output format in this circumstance is HTML. But um, you know, from that perspective, I can do uh, um, you know I can do PDF or any format. So so crit uh, or uh, uh, Hendricks, uh, what, what were some of the questions that came up? Uh, Larry, thank you. Several of the questions have to do with which uh, minimum version of tools uh, is required to get connected query. So, yeah, so the minimum version of tools is People Tools 849. So the first version of, uh, of PeopleSoft that had XML Publisher didn't have connected query, um, and that was People Tools 848. So 849 is the first version that has that. One of the questions specifically states that they've got uh, PeopleSoft 8.9 and Tools 849.15, but they don't have connected query. Any thoughts on that? Um, let me, you know what, let me take a look um, and make sure that it's not 8.5.0 that's the minimum release. Um, okay. I was pretty sure that it was uh, 849, but I could be I could be wrong on that. 
Uh, the, the two, two, two of the questions have to do with 849 and, the, and they don't have connected query. Um, the, another question is how do you get the word add-in? Ah, that is a great question. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up the, uh, I'll actually go and show you that. So to get the word add-in, if you go under the XML publisher menu, this is one of the nice things that, uh, that the PeopleSoft folks did, was to simplify the deployment of that. So under XML publisher, there is this uh, setup folder. If you go to the design helper, this is actually that plugin right there. So, uh, you know, so from that perspective, the, uh, the plugin uh, is pretty easy to download. One of the things that I found is that um, I, when I first went to Windows 7 um, with uh, with the plugin, it was, and I was running a 64-bit. Uh, in fact, this machine is running 64-bit Windows 7. One of the things was that the installer for the Design Helper was hard coded to check for the 32-bit Java binaries, binaries, and gave me an error message. So I actually installed on this machine. I installed the 32-bit Java binaries, and then installed the Design Helper, and it installed just fine. Um, Proj Basnet um, actually was the person who pointed me in that direction, um, and he has a, he has a pretty active blog that that, that he has that, that had that information. So. Um, all right, so from the perspective of, uh, let's take a, take a quick look. Larry, one of, one of the things I wanted to suggest is, is we've, got, we've got probably almost uh, a dozen or more questions. And so I think that perhaps the best way, if I might suggest this to, to, to the audience, is we will post a recording of this webinar on our blog in the next few days. Uh, and we'll go ahead and answer everybody's question um, on the posting on the blog. Uh, if that, uh, Larry, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, excellent, because so, I think okay. if we try to answer every one, it'll it'll probably take a, a little bit too much time. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So thank thank you all for your questions, and and, and check the blog early next week, and and we should have all of the information for you. So let's take a look and see what happens. So here's the report that I just ran. Um, so it went through, and if you notice, it went through and it gave me all the information I was looking for. So it gave me, I could have put a page break in there, but you can see it repeating each person, the username, the, the department, and the description of that department. So that's pretty cool. So why don't we go one step further? And um, what I'd like to do now is is uh, add something to that report. So I'm going to close out of this um, and go back into Word. And we will open my template back up again. And since I closed out of Word, um, it actually does not understand anything about this yet. So I have to reload my XML data. So every time you close out of Word, you have to reload it. It doesn't remember that. So I'll add this in here. So why don't we do this? Um, one of the things I could do is I can put in a table to list my employees um, that, that fall under this. So let's do that. So uh, uh, actually, let's, so I'll go back to the table wizard. So I'll do a table instead of a form. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the second level in here. And what I'm going to do is just put the input. So ample ID, uh, actually let's do the name first, then the ample ID, and then the job code. So I have the department already in there, so I don't need to re repeat that. So then, I'll, so then I can go next, and then within that, again, I can do now groupings. So because I'm uh, because you know so if I wanted to maybe I could do a group by job code, um, so that looks kind of interesting. Um, and then um, so by doing that grouping again, it'll group those things together. Click next, uh, and then we'll also sort by 
by the employee's name. And I'm just going to keep these together so you don't have to watch me change things. So if you notice, again, I have my group, you know, it's between the grouping here. I could put other things in here by the job code, you know, go from that perspective. So let's just save this and see what we've got. So now that I've saved that, I can actually go in and again, you know, one of the reasons why this is uh, this is nice to do this this way is I can go in here. And if you notice, it shows that I've made a change with this template. One of the things that I can do here is I can actually do a comparison with the previous version, um, and then go through and do that use words uh, uh, comparison piece for that. So I can do that. I can check it in. I'm not going to go through all of that with you at this point. I just want to upload it and show you what it looks like with these changes. I'll go back to reporting tools, maximal publisher, port definition, um, and here's the one we've been working on today. Go back to the template. Now, because I'm using today's effective date, um, what I'm going to have to do is correct history to make the change because I'm doing multiple of these in one day. So it doesn't have an effective sequence. So that's a bit of a challenge. So now that I've done correct history, what I'm going to have to do here is delete this. I thought it told me. Try again. Correct history. Delete this. And now I can upload my latest one. So in progress, active, okay, so that's all there. So now that I've saved this with the new one, go back to the report scheduler. Okay, go up to this one right here and rerun that. While this runs, I'll make another change. So we've gone through, we've done that. Um, so let's go. Let's do the next piece. And what I'm going to do is uh, go back to Word, and I'm actually going to save this off under a brand new, um, brand new report name. So I'll go back to File, Save As, and I'll call this Template Two. The reason is again, we're going to we're going to have the data switch what the template is. So this one shows based on the job code data. But let's go back and let's do something more fancy like um, get rid of this group section and we'll insert a, uh, a chart. So here's the charting piece. So the charting wizard, you know, so you can do bar chart, uh, you can do, uh, I'm going to actually do a pie chart here. And then what you do is you just start pulling data in. And what I'm going to do is basically at this level um, um, for the employee, where I actually show the employee data here, um, I have the compensation rate in here. So what I can do is I can actually pull the compensation rate in for that. And then what I want to do is I want to have the job code actually drive what, uh, what segments of my pie chart are. And so I can go in, pull those things in. There's a bunch of attributes that I can set for formatting and things like that. But I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, so I'm going to click OK here. And so now it just inserted my pie chart in there. With, and again, it's only showing the sample data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. 